What is up guys? Michael coming back at you with another video. If you're new to the channel, sick dude. Before I start, consider hitting that like button, that subscribe button down below, and commenting some fun facts down below, because why not? Today, I'm just gonna talk about an experience that I had that hopefully will make people less stressed about the infamous coding interview. I'm pretty sure I failed a coding interview, but I still got an offer after that. I'm just gonna sort of explain that experience to maybe be able to put some uh, anxieties to rest. So just for this video, I'm gonna keep the company name. Uh, I'm not gonna say it just because I'm not sure if I should. Uh, and I'm also not gonna say the technical question they directly asked me. I'll, I'll talk about the concept. You know, I, I don't think I'm allowed talk specifically about what they asked me. So basically, I had been in contact with this one company for potentially a software engineering position after college. I basically started being in contact with them in, I want to say early August, and I actually got my offer, or I got confirmation that I would receive an offer in the end of October. So it did take a little bit to actually get to that point. But I basically, uh, leading up to this sort of final interview, I did some phone screenings, um, some in-person, uh, just like some recruiting events, but nothing was a technical interview view is more just like screening. But since I'm actually studying abroad, and if you don't know that, and you want to check out why you should definitely study abroad, you can check that out maybe over here. I'll put a little screenshot of a thumbnail, you know how it be. But yeah, so I am actually studying abroad in Scotland right now. So I couldn't really fly to their campus and do a physical interview. And I was actually really scared that was going to disqualify me from them actually caring, because why would they pay for a really long flight across, you know, almost the world, come interview at their campus, if they could just get another candidate. But uh, fortunately, also if you're if you're new to the channel, you'll you'll rec you'll uh, you'll hear the jet engine in front of me. Um, you know, sorry about that. Yeah, they basically were very accommodating, which I was super thankful for. They said I could do a final round interview via video chat. That's basically what I did. So basically one week I had a four hour interview. So it was basically like a final interview. I interviewed with four different people. Yeah, I believe it was, four, I interviewed with, I, I don't actually remember. It was either three or four people, but it took up around four hours. I think I finished a little bit early. Um, and they mostly just talked about my experiences in the past, you know, difficult challenges, uh, you know, typical interview questions but nothing like a whiteboarding interview question I had I hadn't gotten that yet now I, I literally studied so much for that I was so nervous because I had only done one technical interview before in which I didn't get an offer for um, so I wanted to make sure I did I did better so I basically did like I wrote down like 50 leak code questions by hand like in days leading up or maybe even more than that I also looked up like specific uh, interview questions for that company that people people were asked just common coding questions again so I did like hours and hours and hours of prep uh, going into this interview so I was the technical aspect was the thing I was most scared about and I think that's very common uh, for most you know graduating computer science students is or even if you're looking for an internship is getting the technical aspects down because you can, uh, I mean, if, if you're comfortable talking to people, you can usually nail behavioral questions, but the technical questions are where they get you. Especially that's where they got me. Basically got to the last, last guy in the interview and I hadn't received any technical questions yet. So I was like, am I gonna get through this interview? This final round interview with no technical questions. For this very re reputable company, large company, large tech company. <laughs> and, and then they asked me like, uh, hey, have you been asked any technical questions yet? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, we're gonna have to set something up for you then. And I was like, ah, almost got through. But so I did the four, the, the four hour, just mostly behavioral interview. And they basically asked me to set up another, uh, you know, final technical round interview, a video chat. Cause again, I couldn't, I couldn't fly anywhere. I couldn't go to like a campus to interview. So it was only a couple days later. So basically I, um, I was doing some more prep. Uh, I had to do some homework cause I'm still in school. Uh, so I was doing that, uh, prepping for the interview again, top of all the prep I already did for the four hour interview I had earlier that week. Uh, so basically the time for the interview came, I was super nervous. It was a couple days later after my four hour interview, I had still been prepping and it was only scheduled for about an hour. I didn't know how many questions they were gonna ask me. I was figuring maybe like like two or three, uh, but it turns out they only asked me one question. They brought up some software that I could use to write the code, but it wasn't gonna be tested, which I was a little bit relieved about because uh, you don't have to worry too much about syntax and more about the problem-solving aspect of it, which I 
think is, you know, a little bit more beneficial. I, again, like I don't wanna specifically tell you what question they asked me because I don't wanna jeopardize anything and I don't know if I'm technically allowed to. Basically, it was a sort of sorting question, but in terms of difficulty, I found it much, much, much harder than uh, leak code questions. Leak code questions you can do in five minutes. This one, pretty difficult to grasp. It actually pretty frightened me like when I, when I heard the question, I was like, I tried to approach it from a bunch of different angles. And I think that's as someone interviewing for, um, you know, a grad, like just graduating from college for a position. The important thing is really just talking through your thought process. And that's some tips that I read when I was prepping for this interview is just like kind of thinking out loud, even if you don't know the answer immediately. That's kind of what I was doing. I was like, hey, I'm thinking about approaching it like this. I'm thinking about, you know, maybe I can use this tactic I've seen in other problems. So basically, I started trying to attack this problem. One big tip that I, want to stress that I didn't do was make sure you know all the specifications of the problem because f for this specific question I just kept adding one thing that the interviewer mentioned I, I just kept forgetting it and that was leading me down some wrong paths but he kept reminding me about the you know this one aspect of it again I don't want to go into too much detail and then I and then I could sort of try to solve it more but multiple times I even asked him like hey I think this is it how does this look and multiple times he's like, hey, why don't you go check it again? He was super accommodating, really, really nice. I wanna, you know, apl applaud him for that. And I, I thought I was just brutally bombing the whole thing. Cause I was like, here, here's this sort of rough solution that I think will work. And then I would ask like, hey, is this it? And then he would basically say, why don't you go look through it again? Keep testing it, indicating it wasn't right. So then I just kept thinking out loud. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, I see you, I need this to do this. How about this time? And he'd be like, closer, try again. And I, I you know, I, I just did that through several iterations until I finally got inefficient solution. It was the inefficient, inefficient solution for, for this problem. And it took me like 30, 35 minutes maybe to get to that solution. And this isn't only an hour block. And I was like, I don't know if this guy's gonna like has more questions for me. But basically we, we I one, once I got that rudimentary answer, he told me about the efficient answer, how I could approach that. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And basically got to the, about the 40 minute mark of the, the hour that we were allocated. And he's like, all right, that's pretty much all I got for you. And I, at that point I was like, all right, I failed, I guess. You no, know, there wasn't a total lot of, I, I gave like the, the runtime analysis uh, and speaking through my thought process, but I figured I'm like, I just bombed this final interview, this final coding question, uh, just cause uh, you know, I didn't, I, I kept forgetting some things and I also didn't really remember all the, you know, some of the specific technical aspects of, you know, different sorting questions. And then, so I, he basically asked if I had any questions for him. I asked him a little bit about the company, about what he does, which I always think is important. I also think you should take it just a genuine interest in where you could be, end up working. And then I did, when we were just, about to terminate the interview i just said like hey man you know thanks for sitting down with me i apologize i get pretty nervous uh i i know i didn't get to the efficient solution i hope that doesn't disqualify me and i just wanted to you know show show graciousness and which i think is show, show respect and then he basically said uh totally i totally understand it he's like i saw your thought process and you ended up did you ended up getting a solution, although it wasn't, you know, the most efficient one, but, um, you know, that's what I was looking for was your thought process. So then, uh, you know, we said our goodbyes and basically I left that interview and I, I was talking to my mom and my friends and I was basically like, that was a super hard interview. Pretty sure I just bombed it. I don't think I'm going to get an offer because, you know, I, I felt like I just didn't do well at all. I sent some thank you emails to the recruiters that I was talking to and some employees that I knew there, you know, basically thanking them for their help and telling them I just had my, you know, last interview and, you know, hopefully it works out, which I suggest that everyone does is to always send thank you emails, regardless of the outcome. It just shows respectfulness and, you know, politeness. And I think that's needed to help set you apart as well, um, even if you don't get an offer. And then about a week later, I was getting a little bit nervous, but in response to one of my thank you emails to one of the recruiters, I actually got a got an email basically um, affirming that I would be getting an offer in the future. So that was really, really, really great to basically know that, you know, I thought I'd terrible on this coding interview, but now I know that I'm a I actually will be receiving an offer. Maybe I did do really bad on the coding interview and maybe my interviews with the other you know four people that I interviewed with prior were really um really helpful and sort of balanced out what I did poorly or maybe it was just the thought process that I showed during the coding interview was good and that they liked 
uh, even though I didn't get the, you know, I wasn't like, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. I wasn't super fast. I was generally just trying to think about the problem. So I think about, you know, just some, just, just some tips for people that are, you know, graduating CS, looking to get into some tech companies, some like big ones. Try to show your thought process because they want to see how you problem solve. Now, anyone can memorize lead code questions, really. Anyone, anyone can do that. And often at this point, tech companies know they're not going to take a question directly from Lee Cook. It's gonna be maybe the basis of one and then altered, derived, made a little bit harder, but they wanna see your thought process. So just try to speak about what you're thinking about. Are you gonna tackle this problem? Also just be, you know, polite, gracious. Thank you for their time. You know, they're, they're taking their time to sit down with you. And also just try to uh, distinguish yourself, like make sure that everything isn't just riding on the interview. Maybe you have some other qualifications. So for me, I know I have a, um, I have a security clearance, which uh, you know is hard. Or it's harder to get. You know, not everyone can get one. So I, I would think that that would help my you know, interview process as it's like sort of another thing that distinguishes me from other candidates. I think that helps. I think my other interviews helps, maybe my thought process helped, but basically I just wanted to do a little quick video explaining my experience about how I seemingly failed a coding interview, but still received an offer despite that. And hopefully that relieves some of the anxiousness people feel about going into coding interviews. Also, it's not the end of the world if you don't get an offer. If you fail, just keep trying because you'll fail, fail, fail. You only need one success. You got wise words of Michaels, lads, wise words. Consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Consider hitting that like button, that notification bell. You know how it be, lads. Help the YouTube algorithm help me. And eventually, comment down below if you found this video helpful at all. Again, my name is Michael. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.